Today we're going to be adding an auxiliary cable to this Lexus radio. To remove the radio, I'm going to first start by moving the gear shifter out of the way and pulling out this box underneath the radio. Next I'm going to remove the top panel for these vents. I'm just going to use a panel removal tool and come in here and pop the clips out from each side. And pull that out and rest it on top of the dashboard. Next I'm going to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts at the top here. Next at the bottom here we're going to unscrew these two 10 millimeter bolts. One on this side and one on this side here. Okay there might be a black clip here that you have to remove like that. The next step is to remove the radio. I'm just going to pull it forward and remove it. Next we're going to pull out the climate control connector which is on the top here. Just squeeze the tab and pull it out. It's two connectors. And then we're going to take out the radio connectors and the two antenna connectors. So here we've got the radio and climate control unit removed from the car. I'm just going to start by removing these screws on the side here to remove the climate control part from the radio. I'm also going to remove these four screws from the side brackets. Okay, so with the bracket free I can remove the climate control unit. Next I'm going to remove these two small screws that attach the faceplate. Next I'm going to use a flat screwdriver and lift up these tabs here and slowly pry the face off of the radio. And then I'm going to move over this way and get the tabs on this side. And then I can pull apart the radio face like that. Next I'm just going to pop this metal piece up from the radio. Next I'm going to remove this top circuit board here that's blocking access to the cassette player. There are four screws, two on each side. One more screw in the back here to remove. This is where the connector is on the circuit board, so I'm going to gently pry it up here and remove this part of the board. This here is the cassette player in the stereo. I'm just going to remove the four screws that hold it to the circuit board. Then I'm going to gently pry the circuit board connection here and remove the cassette portion from the stereo. So here I've got the cassette deck. As you can see, this ribbon cable is where the sound comes from the head and goes into this equalizer chip. We've got the right terminal and left terminal here. We're going to be soldering to the top of this right terminal as well as the left terminal on the bottom here. To get a proper ground point, I'm using a screwdriver here to scratch down to the copper to give me some good contact. We're just tinning the contact for the ground. Now we're just applying a little bit of solder to the contact of the right terminal. And we're just applying some more solder to the left terminal here. Okay, we've got the wire in place on the right side. We're just going to solder the wire in. And we're just soldering the wire for the other side. Finally, we're soldering the ground connection onto the PCB. The cable we're using is just a regular 3.5 millimeter microphone extension cable. I'm just going to cut a little bit of it off. And then strip these wires and attach them to the radio. So I've traced my extension cable for the left, right and ground to a pinout for the 3.5 millimeter jack. Yeah, just tinning the tips here. Okay, here we are soldering the wires together between the auxiliary wire that plugs into the phone and the extension wires that come out from the radio. We're just wrapping a little bit of tape around the wire to make sure it's insulated. So here's what it looks like after I finish soldering the ground and left and right connections. I've also disconnected the head from the cassette so that it doesn't cause any interference when I'm playing through auxiliary. So I just used a pair of side snips and I took out two of these little vent holes so that I can pass my wiring through there. Next I'm going to feed my auxiliary wire through the hole I made on the side of the casing and feed that through. Okay then I'm going to replace the cassette tape deck to the main board making sure that this connector lines up with this connector here. Then I'm going to replace the four screws that hold on the cassette player. Next we're going to replace the radio board. Make sure the connector goes in. And then replace four Phillips screws, two on this side and two more Phillips screws on this side. One more screw on the back of the antenna. Now that everything's assembled, I'm going to go ahead and pop on the top cover. So looking at the LCD radio backlighting here, the two lights are blown. They are located here on the back of the circuit board. Take off the two screws and you can access them right here. We're going to be replacing them with 12 volt LEDs. As you can see, these lights here are soldered on, so we're going to go ahead and desolder them. Pop out the old LED and pop out the other bulb right there. We're just using a continuity tester to test for ground. 
As you can see, the two inside terminals are ground. So here we've got the LEDs, just a 50-50 SMD LED with a resistor soldered on the end. The one with the resistor is a positive side. We're going to solder the negative side to the inside of these two terminals here. I'm just going to insert the LED from the back, bring it around, and fold the leads over onto the terminals. Here we are soldering the new LED to the board. I'm just chopping off the end of the lead there. Alright, so here we got the two LEDs soldered in. I'm just going to go ahead and replace the board. Just replace this screw here. One more screw on this side. Then I'm going to pop on the radio face. And then replace two screws on this side. And two more screws on this side. Next, I'm going to replace this bracket onto the side of the radio. And screw in four Phillips screws. So here we've got the assembled radio. We've got the aux wire coming out, which we can run into the console. I'm going to go ahead and install this into the car now. Here we are inside the car. I'm just going to replace the HVAC unit onto the bracket and then install this bracket on the other side and then replace the four screws. And then replace the four more screws holding the climate control to the bracket. Now before I install this radio into the dash, I just ran the aux wire around the side here so that I can access it with my phone. Next I'm going to reconnect the antenna wires to the radio and then connect the two radio wires. And then finally connect these two climate control wires to the back of the climate control. Here are all the connections made to the radio at the back. Next I can reinstall the radio HVAC unit into the car. Then I'm going to replace the two 10 millimeter bolts that go on the top of the radio. Then I'm going to replace the two 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom of the radio, making sure they don't fall back down into the dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up these 10 millimeter bolts, nice and snug, and tighten these up at the top here. Next I'm going to replace the vents at the top. Next I'm going to replace the storage unit underneath the radio. To trick the cassette player into thinking there's a tape in the deck, I'm going to be using a blank cassette. Because we've disconnected the head of the tape, there shouldn't be any interference. I'm going to insert the cassette into the deck. And I press play. As you can see the radio now lights up nicely with the LEDs that we've soldered in. Finally, with the tape playing, I'm going to insert my 3.5mm jack into my phone and press play. <laughs> 